Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. In this episode of Red Giant TV, you'll get stuck on director Seth Worley as he shows you how to fight crime and escape an angry mob by using trap code particular to sling webs like a boss. If that boss happened to be named Mr. Spider-Man CEO of WebCorp, oh yeah, sling it to me, baby. Hey everybody, Seth Worley here. Uh, here's our raw footage we shot. Uh, looks pretty ridiculous. So we'll create a comp with uh, this plate. And first thing we want to do is uh, create a new solid and call it particular and spell it correctly. And we're going to then drop particular onto that solid, obviously. And we're going to actually be working with our default settings um, that come in particular. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our emitter and we want to position our emitter uh, with the web shooter. And then keyframe manually, every frame, uh, our position of the emitter with that web shooter. Um, so then if we uh, change our direction to directional, and then we kind of turn up our velocity, we're going to start to see uh, a good idea of what direction uh, we are going in. And you'll then want to rotate our emitter on all the different axes until we get it to where it looks like it's going in the right direction. And again, if we turn the velocity way up, we start to see even more specific specificity in the direction. Oh, and then turn the direction spread to zero. Looks like it's almost lined up. As always, it's a bit of trial and error. So it looks pretty good. Uh, we obviously would then want to turn the particles up really high so that it creates a steady stream of particles that look like one line of web. And we can affect the, you know, if we want to change the speed at which, you know, it comes out of the web shooter, we can turn the velocity down. Uh, it's really up to your, you know, your preference. Next thing we want to do is open uh, the particle section and size, it's at five, we can put it at six maybe. But the important thing is to, uh, is to randomize it a bit. And, you know, you can turn it up to 100, looks pretty good. Maybe turn the size then back down to five or four. There you go. Let's open shading, and we're gonna turn, uh, not shading on, we're gonna turn our shadow let on. And that right there, you can leave it at the default settings, it looks pretty good. Or if you want, you can change the color strength or whatever. And once you get motion blur on, it looks even better. Uh, so then what we want to do is we want to add a color matcher from KeyCorrect into on the, par the particular layer and set the target layer to our plate. And that blends it with the shot. Looks pretty good. So our next shot, we have the projector we needed to cling to. And you can see there's a slight subtle bit of movement. Uh, and it's enough for us to want to uh, track that movement. I could we could do this manually, but you know why deny ourselves the glory of motion tracking? See, I mean seriously. So then we want to create a new null object, and we want to edit our target of our motion track to be that new null object. And then we'll hit apply. And now our null moves with our shot. So that's good. We'll come back to that later. Now we want to create a new solid. We want to call it particular. Just like before. And you got it. Drop particular onto that solid. Now, uh, what we're actually going to do, instead of starting from scratch again, go back into your first comp and we can go down and we can save selection as animation preset we'll call it spidey and that saves it as an animation preset we can pull it up pull it back up whenever we need it um, and then we'll it's now in our presets we'll go down select spidey so now 
obviously we'll have to affect the change the you know emitter location and direction of the emitter but uh, you know it's a good place to start so we'll turn our keyframes off on our position move the location on the z-axis now a little farther back and then we will mess with the rotation uh, of everything and it's just kind of like usual trial and error until we get it to be hitting the projector at just the right angle the thing the difference in this with this shot as opposed to the last one is that the emitter is the, the particles are going to be interacting uh, with something we need the particles to hit that projector and appear to wrap around uh, the pole so the way we're going to do that we're going to actually create a new solid and we're going to call it wall and then we'll go into a particular oh for we'll make the wall 3d and uh, we're going to mess around with the scale unlock the the con uh, constraints and move position it to where that solid is lining up with the pole fairly well and if we turn our opacity down a little bit we can get a little bit more reference uh, visual reference to where we are turn the you know the width of the solid down a bit and line up with the pole that looks good and then we're going to parent that to our our null that was moving and also just to save ourselves some time we're going to parent the particular the solid itself to the null we could parent the actual emitter location but it's easier just to do this way so looks good now we need to go into particular and we need to change our physics settings uh, to bounce rather than air and then we're going to set our wall layer uh, to our wall layer now if, and we want to set it to when it, it hits it needs to stick now the thing here is obviously uh, positioning is different and weird and it's all relative so we have to move the emitter around until it's meeting meeting and mat meeting with the solid and then we want to basically go in and add some natural movement and motion to the emitter to the web string and that's a matter of literally frame for the first like three or four frames just uh, keyframe each frame and with the emitter being in a different very you know subtle change in the emitter location also we want to make sure our wall layer is set to infinite plane so right now it's hitting and it's sticking and it appears to be doing one specific kind of motion uh, and it's really all about going and just messing with these first couple little keyframes that we create that might be a little too much in fact and we can delete some keyframes or move them around until they're starting to look starting to create uh, the visual that we want if it's sticking to the pole other thing is we need to turn our particles up because there's clearly a lot of space in between each of these particles now we can go to world transform and position it to where it's more accurately hitting the pole in the way that we want it to be that looks pretty cool and we turn our wall layer off the visibility of it off so we, we don't need to see it once we've got that it looks pretty good we want to add color matcher onto our layer as we did before that looks good and the next thing we want to do is create a light because the projector is going to be emitting a light onto the particles so let's go ahead and turn shading on on the particles and then we'll position this light on the z-axis uh, at the right place and then over on the x and y axis to the right place over near the bulb so now there's a brighter amount of light on those particles closer to the projector which is cool. Uh, we can also change the color of our light by double clicking on it and then using the dropper to get a very subtle tint of color on that light. So that looks pretty awesome. Alright, so once he attaches himself to the projector and swings around the next thing we want to see is him swinging and this is the kind of more ridiculous shot of the both of them of the three of them 
Well, this is our plate we have without mica anywhere in it. And what I have uh, is Foundry's camera tracker. We'll drop that on and we'll hit track features. Once we do that, we'll hit solve. And it's solved, hit okay. And then let's select one of these track points near where the projector is. Go in here, uh, ground space and hit set origin. And then we'll create our scene. What that does is that sets the very or the origin center part of the scene where that projector is, which helps us with our anchor points and our our you know placement of mica. Here's a shot of mica on a green screen hanging from what actually is an extension cord. It's the only thing we could find that he could hang on, and it's it could break at any point. We'll drop that into our scene, and first thing we want to do is select the little anchor point thing up here and be able to move the anchor point up to the top so that when we do rotation and things like that, it'll always be rotating from the top of the rope or the extension cord. Reselect our regular arrow, arrow cursor, make the layer 3D, and scale it down. As we scale it, it'll obviously be scaling toward the anchor point. So let's position it over so we can scale it down. And now you can see it is uh, in the track shot. Rotate him around and then also, let's select and actually go up to layer time, time stretch, since that shot is in slow motion. Let's go hit 50. So it will take, it will be 50% as long and therefore quicker. And position it on the timeline to where we want it to be, how we want it to line up in terms of the, the motion. And then uh, we actually are going to cheat and have the, air, the wire coming from above frame, almost like he attached himself to a different projector. I know it's cheating, but it's a really quick shot and it looks better. So, and you can argue with me all you want, but it's my shot. So, then I'm going to go and I'm going to keyframe the position, the position and the rotation and etc. Uh, of Micah's placement over the course of the shot. So it looks like he's swinging closer to camera. You know, starts far farther and ends up nearer. And that's a lot of trial and error in terms of uh, keyframing. So once that's done, let's uh, get our Primat keyer, drop it on to that layer, make sure Select Background is selected, and we will select our background, which is all, everything green. Try to get all the different shades of green. Uh, refine our background, or clean our background, and then we will uh, clean up our foreground just by selecting our foreground. Simple as that. Now we want to do is we want to crop out a lot of the extra junk that's in this that's in that uh, that green plate. So we want to watch it about a thousand times, and then we want to um, double click on the green layer and create a mask around Mica. That's good. So then, with that layer selected, we want to hit Shift Command C to pre-compose that layer. And uh, once we go into that pre-comp, we want to actually create a mask, kind of like what we just did. And then we're going to duplicate it. The reason for this is because we want to extend that white extension cord. So it means we'll duplicate it in the bottom layer. We will move over a little bit and repeat that, duplicate it in the bottommost layer, move it over a little bit, and repeat this until the wire appears to be you know, long enough to uh, to clip the top of frame in our main comp. So once that's done, we'll come back into our main comp. And the main comp, we still don't see that extension of the wire it's because our initial mask needs to be extended upward. So with it selected, we'll make sure that we move that upward, and there you go. That looks good. Next thing we want to do is, uh, like usual, apply Color Matcher. Let's check out the difference here. It's awesome. Our target layer is our plate, and boom, he's there. And the last step, uh, we're going to create an adjustment layer. Call that adjustment layer Looks. And then we're going to apply Looks. And when we do that, uh, we'll drop that on the adjustment layer. We'll go over here and click edit. And I actually have a look that I've already made here called Justice Con. 
and I will I can move the vignette around if I like. You can get this look at breadgiantpeople.com. I'll have that up. And then uh, there we have it. So with looks and key correct in particular, pretty powerful tools. And uh, like the saying goes, with great power comes the ability to shoot spider webs out of your wrists. <laughs>